Hello everybody, welcome to Mr. Burns' Storytime. Today is chapter 22, the final chapter of The Witches by Roald Dahl. It's off to work we go. For supper that evening, my grandmother had a plain omelette and one slice of bread. I had a piece of that brown Norwegian goat's milk cheese known as Geotost, which I had loved even when I was a boy. We ate in front of the fire, my grandmother in her armchair and me on the table with my cheese on a small plate. Grandmama, I said, now that we have done away with the Grand High Witch, will all the other witches in the world gradually disappear? I'm quite sure they won't, she answered. I stopped chewing and stared at her. But they must, I cried. Surely they must. I'm afraid not, she said. But if she's not there any longer, how are they going to get all the money they need? And who is going to give them orders and jazz them up at the annual meetings and invent all their magic formulas for them? When a queen bee dies, there is always another queen in the hive ready to take her place, my grandmother said. It's the same with witches. In the great headwaters, quite to headquarters, where the Grand High Witch lives, there is always another Grand High Witch waiting in the wings to take over should anything happen. Oh no, I cried. That means everything we did was for nothing. Have I become a mouse for nothing at all? We saved all the children of England, she said. I don't call that nothing. I know, I know, I cried, but that's not nearly good enough. I felt sure that all the witches of the world would slowly fade away after we had got rid of the leader. Now you tell me that everything is going to go on just the same as before? Not exactly as before, my grandmother said. For instance, there are no longer any witches in England. That's quite a triumph, isn't it? But what about the rest of the world? I cried. What about America and France and Holland and Germany? And what about Norway? You must not think I have been sitting back and doing nothing these last few days, she said. I have been giving a great deal of thought and time to that particular problem. I was looking up at her face when she said this, and all at once I noticed that a little secret smile was beginning to spread slowly around her eyes and the corners of her mouth. Why are you smiling, Grandmama? I asked her. I have some rather interesting news for you, she said. What news? Shall I tell you from the beginning? Yes, please, I said. I like good news. She had finished her omelette and I had enough of my cheese. She wiped her lips with her napkin and said, As soon as we arrived back in Norway, I picked up the telephone and made a call to England. Who in England, Grandmama? To the Chief of Police in Bournemouth, my darling. I told him I was the Chief of Police for the whole of Norway and that I was interested in the peculiar happenings that had taken place recently in the Hotel Magnificent. Now hang on a sec, Grandmama, I said. There's no way an English policeman is going to believe that you are the head of the Norwegian police. I am very good at imitating a man's voice, she said. Of course he believed me. The police in Bournemouth was honoured to get a call from the chief of police of the whole of Norway. So what did you ask him? I asked him for the name and address of the lady who had been living in room 454 in the Hotel Magnificent, the one who disappeared. You mean the Grand High Witch, I cried. 
Yes, my darling. And did he give it to you? Naturally, he gave it to me. One policeman will always help another policeman. By golly, you've got a nerve, Grandmama. I wanted her address, my grandmother said. But did he know her address? He did indeed. They had found her passport in her room and her address was in it. It was also in the hotel register. Everyone who stays at the hotel has to put a name and address in the book. But surely the Grand High Witch would have, wouldn't have put her real name and her real address in the hotel register, I said. Why ever not? My grandmother said, nobody in the world had the faintest ideas who she was except the other witches. Wherever she went, people simply knew her as a nice lady. You, my darling, and you alone were the only non-witch ever to see her with her mask off. Even in her home district, in the village where she lived, people knew her as a kindly and very wealthy baroness who gave large sums of money to charity. I have checked up on this. I was getting excited now. And that dress you got, Grandmama, that must have been the, the secret headquarters of the, grand, of the Grand High Witch. It still is, my grandmother said. And that will be where the new Grand High Witch is certain to be living at this very moment with her retinue of special assistant witches. Important rulers are always surrounded by a large retinue of assistants. Where are the headquarters, Grandmama? I cried. Tell me, quick, where is it? It is a castle, my grandmother said. And the fascinating thing is that in the castle will be all the names and addresses of all the witches in the world. How else could a Grand High Witch run her business? How else could she summon the witches of all the various countries to their annual meetings? Where is the castle, Grandmama? I cried impatiently. Which country? Tell me quick. Guess, she said. Norway, I cried. Right, first time, she answered. High up in the mountains above a small village. That was thrilling news. I did a little dance of excitement on the tabletop. My grandmother was getting pretty worked up herself and now she heaved herself out of her chair and began pacing up and down the room, thumping the carpet with her stick. So, we have work to do, you and I, she cried out. We have a, a great task ahead of us. Thank heavens you are a mouse. A mouse can go anywhere. And I'll have to do, all I have to do is put you down somewhere near the Grand High Witch's castle and you will be very easy to be able to get inside and creep around looking and listening to your heart's content. I will, I will, I answered. No one will ever see me. Moving about in a big castle will be child's play compared with going into a crowded kitchen full of cooks and waiters. You could spend days in there if necessary, my grandmother cried. In her excitement, she was waving her stick all over the place and suddenly she knocked over a tall and very beautiful vase that went crashing onto the floor and smashed into a million pieces. Forget it, she said. It's only Ming. You could spend weeks in that castle if you wanted to. Then they'd never know you were there. I myself would get a room in the village and you could sneak out of the castle and have supper with me every night and tell me what is going on. I could, I could, I cried out, and inside the castle I could go snooping around simply everywhere. But your main job, of course, my grandmother said, would be to destroy every witch in the place. That would really would be the end of the whole organization. Me? Destroy them, I cried. How could I do that? Can't you guess, she said. Tell me, I said. Mouse maker, my grandmother shouted. Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker all over again. 
You will feed it to everyone in the castle by putting drops into the food. You do remember the represent recipe, don't you? Every bit of it, I answered. You mean we're going to make it ourselves? Why not? She said. If they make it, so can we. It's just a question of knowing what goes in it. Who's going to climb up the tall trees to get the Gruntle's eggs? I asked her. I will, she cried. I'll do it myself. There's plenty of life in this old dog yet. I think I'd better do that part of it, Grandmama. You might come a cropper. Those are just details, she cried, waving her stick around again. We shall let nothing stand in our way. And what happens after that? I asked. After the Grand High Witch and everyone else in the castle have been turned into mice? So the castle will be completely endly and I shall come and join you. And wait! I cried. Hold on, Grandmama. I just had a nasty thought. What nasty thought, she said. When the mouse maker turned me into a mouse, I didn't become just any old, ordinary mouse that we, you catch with mouse traps. I became a talking, thinking, intelligent mouse person who wouldn't go near a mouse trap. My grandmother stopped dead in her tracks. She already knew what was coming next. Therefore, I went on, if the mouse maker to turn the grand high witch and all the other witches in the castle into mice, the whole place will be swarming with very clever, very nasty, very dangerous, talking, thinking mouse witches. They'll all be witches in mouse's clothing. And that, I added, could be very horrible indeed. By golly, you're right, she cried. That never occurred to me. I couldn't possibly take on a castle full of mouse witches, I said. Nor could I, she said. They'd have to be get rid of. Once, at once, they'd have to be smashed and bashed and chopped up into tiny little pieces exactly as they were in the Hotel Magnificent. I'm not doing that, I said. I couldn't anyway. I don't think you could either, Grandmama. And mouse traps, mouse traps wouldn't be the slightest use. By the way, I added, the Grand High Witch who did me in was wrong about mouse traps, wasn't she? Yes, yes, my grandmother said impatiently, but I'm not concerned with that Grand High Witch. She's been chopped up long ago by the hotel chef. It's the new Grand High Witch we've got to deal with now, the one up in the castle and all her assistants. A Grand High Witch is bad enough when she's disguised as a lady, but just think of what she could do if she were a mouse. She could go anywhere. I've got it, I shouted, leaping about a foot in the air. I've got the answer. Tell me, my grandmother snapped. The answer is, the answer is cats, I shouted. Bring on the cats. My grandmother stared at me. Then a great grin spread across her face and she shouted, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Shove. Shove a half a dozen cats into the castle, I cried, and they'll kill every mouse in the place in five minutes. I don't care how clever they are. You're a magician, my grandmother shouted, starting to wave her stick about once again. Look out for va vases, Grandmama. To heck with the vases, she shouted. I'm so thrilled, I don't care if I break the lot. Just one thing, I said. You've got to make absolutely sure I'm well out of the way myself before you put the cats in. That's a promise, she said. What will we do after the cats have killed all the mice? I asked her. All the cats, but we will take all the cats back to the village and then you and I will have the castle completely to ourselves. And then, I asked. Then we shall go through the records and get the names and addresses of all the witches in the wide world. And after that, I said, quivering with excitement. After that, my darling, the greatest task of all will begin for you and me.
We shall pack our bags and go traveling all over the world. In every country we visit, we shall seek out the houses where the bitches are living. We shall find each house one by one. And having found it, you will creep inside and leave your little drops of deadly mouse maker in the bread or in the cornflakes or a rice pudding or whatever food you see lying about. It will be a triumph, my darling. A colossal, unbelievable triumph. We shall do it entirely by ourselves, just you and me. That will be our work for the rest of our lives. My grandmother picked me up off the table and kissed me on the nose. Oh, my goodness me, we're going to be busy these next few weeks and months and years, she cried. I think we are, I said. But what fun and excitement it's going to be. You can say that again, my grandmother cried, giving me another kiss. I can't wait to get started.